So hello and welcome back to Strathpeffer Junction. Um, today it's a layout update. Hurrah! <laughs> um, the first layout update in quite some time. Um, I have had one planned for quite a wee while now, um, but with the Model Railway YouTube Community Group Coach video um, and uh, the really hot summer, um, so I just couldn't get up into the loft and a variety of other things, lots of excuses, reasons, um, I've not been able to do one. So today I'm going to do um, a relatively quick uh, update on where I've got to with the layout. Um, my computer, my uh, <laughs> Dell computer, um, I've always had Dell in the past because they were reliable but the one that I bought recently has been an absolute nightmare uh, and has given up the ghost. So I'm going to have to send it off to get repaired for about three weeks. So uh, this is a quick layout video which I'm hurrying out before I have to send the computer off. Um, and uh, then you'll uh, have radio silence for a few weeks until things are back again. Anyway, so what have I been getting up to over the last few while? Well, I've been churning out a few videos for the Model Railway Coach, as I mentioned before, uh, related to that. So the, the kind of uh, the flashing light and pickup circuits and so on. So if you've not seen them, uh, I'll pop a wee link up above and, and you can check them out. Um, but I've also been doing quite a lot of tinkering with chain trains generally. Um, or, or locomotives generally. I've been doing quite a lot of sound installations recently, other decoder installations, and I've actually got quite a backlog of all that. Um, and uh, also I've been fixing a few bits and pieces for other people as well, not just myself. So I've been keeping uh, fairly busy. I <laughs> uh, uh, haven't got quite as much done in the, the loft layer as I'd hoped. But anyway, what I have managed to do is to finish designing or, or the kind of for working draft or draft to work to uh, layout plan for Strathpeffer Junction. I finished that just this week. Um, so I know with these things you can end up just going round and round the houses and you know, f tweaking and refining and then to the extent you never actually build it. So I've got a, a general layout that I'm fairly happy with and I'm going to build to that but undoubtedly it will probably change or um, evolve a little bit as I get going. But anyway, um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll quickly walk you through that uh, that design uh, and we'll have a look at the, the trap plan that I did just really quickly. Um, and then once we've uh, had a look at that, then I'll take you up to the loft and you can look at where I've reached um, with the, the track work um, and the, well not the track work, but the, the framework uh, and the base work, board work to uh, enable the track work to be the next step. So without further ado, over to the computer and let's have a look at the layout plan. Okay, so that's us over at the computer now. Um, there's a variety of different packages that different people use for designing their model railway layout. Uh, but the one that I like to use is AnyRail. Now I've paid for it because I use it so much. There is a free version which has some limitations, but um, I've spent so much time on it. I think it's only fair to, to uh, chuck some money um, in the way of the software developer. But anyway, I wouldn't say it's automatically the, the best um, software that's out there for motor railways. Um, it is certainly easy enough to use. I don't use anything like all the functions. It's got 3D images and all sorts of things you can do, but uh, I don't use all of that. I use it fairly basically. So let's anyway open up the file that I'm at, version three. Uh, now, the first thing that I would say is that this is just a kind of working draft, or not really draft, but a working document. Um, this is not going to be exactly how the layout is. Um, I have done you know, very regimented bends, very straight areas. I will be uh, you know, sweetening out bends to make them look more natural so the flow of the trains is better. Um, it is just a guide to help me build things and to get started. So uh, this isn't how it is. There's things like the little bay platform here, um, which is totally wonky. Other things like that, just ignore it. It's just an overview. Anyway, so it's broken into a number of different parts. This part here we have... Um, uh, a kind of very small fiddle yard area, really short rakes coaches, the auto loco, that kind of stuff. Um, and then above that will be the only kind of raised level of the layout. There will be a, a TMD, a kind of shunting puzzle TMD. Um, but the rest of the, the, uh, the layout on the other side, uh, that will be the lower level, all the same level, uh, and that will be the main scenic area. Now to get from the, the TMD area over here, down to the, the scenic area, there'll be a, a kind of incline that will come up here. 
uh, and then it will lead into this. But the rest of this will be all on one level of baseboards, but I will be using little tricks and techniques to uh, rise some bits up, some using some woodland scenic risers, for example, uh, and some other bits and pieces. So the, the general approach anyway will be the main station over here. This will be Strathpeffer Junction. It's kind of uh, influenced and informed by Dingwall Station, um, if anybody's familiar with that. There's a few quirks to Dingwall Station, like the branch line is only accessible to uh, to down trains, and I'm copying that here. Uh, there's a few other sort of random sidings and other things that used to be there, and I'll be copying that as well. So there's a few quirks, but I want to build that into it based on prototype. We'll have anyway two mainline uh, loops that will go all the way around, mainline loops, um, and there'll be a crossing section here, which will be a little bit like the Dal Nakardach uh, sort of passing area, double track area on the Highland Main Line. And I'll talk about all this more as and when I get to building it. And um, we'll then have a branch line which will peel off here. There'll be oil siding somewhere on it. Then there'll be Achter Need Station. And this is a station or former station close to where I live. And there'll be a loose kind of modelling of that station. Um, there will then be a loop that will bring the branch back round again onto the main line. But I don't really intend to use that as a kind of working loop. It's more just to allow sort of marshalling of trains and so on. I'll probably create some kind of... Uh, not dead end, but some sort of terminus feeling, or maybe it'll pop into a tunnel or something. I don't know. But really, this will feel very much like a branch. Um, so that's the kind of general idea. It's very much working in progress. It's what's going to get me going, but will undoubtedly change and evolve as, as things progress. Um, there are some things which may not work entirely as I predict or hope or think when I come to building it, so things are flexible. I'm not really sure what I'll do here, whether it will be a mail depot or an old steam area. It's not ideal for a mail depot. Um, I might have another point that brings it back in here. Not sure. Might go for more like a kind of old, slightly superseded steam shed area. Something like that. Not sure. Mystery area. Well, it's a mystery area because it's a total mystery to me as much as anyone else. I don't really know what I'm going to put in there. But uh, anyway, I'll not go on about it anymore. This is kind of what I'm working towards. Um, but we'll see whether or not this is indeed what I end up building. So, right, off to the loft. Okay, so welcome back to Strathpeffer Junction. Here we are in the loft. I've got my wee assistant, uh, Katie, up here with me. Uh, I tried to shoo her out for the video, but she wasn't having any of it. So uh, she's uh, part of the furniture for this one. Um, I'm just really going to have a quick talk through about what I've been up to. Um, nothing in too much detail, really. Just uh, just an update on, on where we've been. Um, I don't have my uh, motorised gimbal set up today because the batteries have run out. So please do uh, accept my apologies for any kind of shaky Blair Witch project style cam work that goes on today but I'll try my best to keep it as level and steady as possible but uh, anyway for those of you who saw the last layer update you'd have seen that I was uh, building all the framework uh, and now we have all the framework just behind the uh, um, the camera stand there uh, all completed um, so this goes round behind me uh, to the wall I'm sitting right at the back end uh, and then to the other side there, just uh, where Katie is, it sweeps around there uh, and background again. Um, and as you can see there, I've got all the plywood cut to size for that uh, right hand side there. And uh, on the left hand side here, we have the plywood, uh, just let's get my finger in here, just in there. Uh, is cut to size as well uh, for that left hand section and I still have plywood that I've got to get and uh, cut for just over where Katie has jumped down to now. Um, and uh, so yeah, so that's the baseboard material kind of in place. Now um, for those of you again who are watching the last live update, I was mulling over a few different thoughts for you know what could go where and so on and uh, while I'm sitting, I'm sitting at the opposite end for the last one I was sitting over here uh, but this section over here anyway had been where the uh, the station had been planned, the mainline station, uh, and on this side it was a kind of scenery area and all the rest of it. Um, and then where I'm sitting, um, I've been thinking about having an upper level TMD. Now um, that is sort of still the plan. Um, I'm still going to have over here the the station area. It will be a very loose modelling on Dingwall Station if anybody is familiar with that. Um, and where I'm sat at the moment will be a countryside area. And then there will be on this side here uh, a, a double main line, sort of Highland main line esque, and then a branch line as well running round. The branch line uh, will stop somewhere where my fingers are just now up there, although there could be a little hidden loop uh, that continues back round. And then the main line will come all the way back round again 
into the station. Now the slight change is that uh, I'm going to play with levels. Before I'd been hoping to have a, a lower fiddle yard and that's just not going to happen because of the, the restrictions that I've got here. So what I'm going to do is on this side I'll have it split so the main line section will be slightly higher up in the branch line section. Uh, and then at this end over here there'll be a high level TMD like a kind of shunting puzzle TMD that will be above the rest of it and there'll be a hidden loop of the main line and possibly a branch coming back round into the station there. Uh, and what I'll also do in this little section here is have a very small fiddle yard that will be hidden underneath the TMD area and will allow maybe storage of a couple of small rakes of coaches, a couple of locos, that kind of thing, the sort of stuff that I might want to, to play with in one kind of running session um, just so that things aren't having to get put away all the time, things are a wee bit easier and so on. So that's the idea and I have talked through all of that already um, or will have done, the magic of video will have allowed me to talk through that on the layout plan before this one. Um, but what I'm also thinking um, about doing is uh, having a kind of slide out drawer a little bit like what Des uh, DJ Motor Railway has done with uh, the control uh, equipment that will be underneath. Um, it won't be quite the same as his, but it's a sort of similar thing, so thank you for the idea, Des. Um, and what I'm also thinking about is having some other drawers, perhaps along this side, uh, or maybe up there, I'm not too sure yet, which will basically have track in them and will allow me to store some rakes of carriages or locos, that kind of stuff, in little storage drawers, so I'm not always taking them in and out of packets and uh, damaging boxes or damaging detail, that kind of stuff. So that, that's the idea anyway. Um, now, one thing that I'm going to do next is to get all the wiring done um, and uh, the uh, the bus wiring for the, the power buses, DCC power buses, uh, the um, 12 volt for any accessories, that kind of stuff. So we'll just pop over here uh, and have a look just now. Um, what I'm going to do following quite a lot of, of other people's uh, ideas is to use 2.5 millimeter copper wire. Um, now, I have quite a lot of this stuff left over from when we wired the garage. Uh, you can see it under there. Um, so I'm going to use this stuff. This is actually, uh, it's not solid core 2.5, it's uh, it's twisted, um, but it's, uh, it's absolutely fine for that. So I'm going to use that anyway, and the idea, just swinging around over to the, the baseboards here, um, just like many people do, is to, to drill a hole through uh, all the support pieces and, and run the bus all the way along. So the, the plan, and I'll just uh, get up again here, the plan will be to have um, a number of buses that will run all the way around delivering power. Um, I'm going to have two different power districts. So one power district is probably going to do the main line area um, and maybe the TMD. Um, and then uh, the sort of sidings around the station and the branch line uh, might come off the other power district. I'm not entirely sure about how I'll divvy that up yet, but th there'll certainly be two. I'm also going to go for block detection because while I want to do quite a lot of manual fiddling about with the, the trains playing, if you will, um, I'd also like to be able to hook it up. Uh, to a computer as well, so there's that sort of flexibility. So in amongst the power districts will also be occupancy blocks as well for, for all of the different sections. Uh, so there's quite a lot of uh, probably drafting and scribbling on bits of paper to work out what's going to go where, you know, where do I want the blocks, where the power districts, what feeds what, but everything's colour coded on the wire anyway, so uh, I'll have, uh, I think I was going to go for uh, orange and grey for one DCC bus, um, and uh, blue and brown for the other, uh, and then black and red for the DC uh, bus and so on, that kind of thing. But I'll explain all of that anyway as and when I come to it. Um, what I'm going to do in terms of getting up to the higher level uh, is I will have, it's not going to be here, but I've just got it laid out, I will have this Woodland Scenic, uh, this is a 4% um, incline, uh, and that will lead up to the TMD area. Now, I pretty much only run modern diesels. When I say modern, I mean not the old Ringfield motor diesels. Um, so it, they'll be fine on that incline, but what I'll probably do a wee bit like what Dave at uh, Dean Park Station did is uh, put the, um, what's it called, power something or other. Uh, anyway, it's the DCC Concepts um, little metal plates that you, you pop in, you use it with uh, neodymium magnets and that can help any of the older trains that you have. So I'll probably install that just to be on the safe side. Um, now, what I will also do is uh, have 2% risers or a sort of 2% risers 
rise anyway for the main line which will come round uh, and then the branch line will probably just be at the baseboard level just now. All thoughts anyway, these are the sorts of things I'm going towards. I want to try and get some interest into the layout so it's not all flat so there's that kind of feeling, that sense of landscape and different heights and branch lines peeling off and all that kind of stuff. So uh, there's some really excellent channels out there and uh, model railway layouts so I've been uh, taking some inspiration from quite a variety of different areas uh, for what uh, what I'm going to do. Um, and uh, also the other thing as well just to mention is I do have this area here which will be filled in part of the layout uh, but I can only do that once I've worked out the trap door down to the room below. There's Katie again, my little sentinel there. Uh, so that's a job that has to be finished um, and also at the end here there will of course be a piece that will cut across here to there to allow the, the track to run here and spinning around, sorry for anybody watching this close up, at the other end where that seat is just now there will be another timber member coming across here and baseboard level in there. But at that end I also plan to put in a little kind of river feature or a loch or something like that so it's likely that the baseboard will drop down a little bit in here to allow our bridge or something. Well that's the idea anyway. So that's the sort of layout update, it's totally messy up here just now and I do apologise for that. There's rubbish everywhere uh, but I'm sure you'll know when you're in the middle of planning all these things and you're playing about all these things kind of accumulate so uh, I'm going to tidy things up a wee bit um, but uh, hopefully in the next one anyway I will have got the the main buses run I will have got things like this hole pretty much filled in or certainly well underway I'll have got the rest of this timber cut up and ready to go uh, and uh, hopefully I'll be within touching distance of getting some trains running Okay, so one very quick thing just to bring you guys up to speed with. Um, I had originally thought I was going to go with Streamline, Pico Streamline uh, Code 100 and I have bought quite a lot of Code 100 track <laughs> and uh, I also have, uh, I'm not sure if it's still there, in one of those boxes over there anyway, um, I have a whole load of uh, Code 100 points. Um, but um, I've been looking at quite a lot of different channels um, of people starting out on the model railway and an awful lot of people are starting out with uh, code 75 and having looked at it particularly the bullhead track which I really like and is very much relevant to a highland layout like I've got um, really I think that it would be daft of me to stick with the code 100 so um, I am in the process of selling all of my code 100 and I'm buying in the code 75 um, and uh, we might just be able to see it down there. There we are, right in the corner there, underneath the layout, code 75. So that's what I'm going to go with. Uh, I'll be using code 75 concrete sleeper for the mainline sections, which is very much prototypical for the Highland mainline in the, the 80s and 90s, uh, and uh, bullhead code 75 from Pico for the branch line, which will run down there, most of the TMD sidings and so on, and also in the station area down here, uh, all the sidings uh, and loops and so on, that'll all be bullhead as well. So um, that was one big change that I have made, is uh, moving the, uh, the code 100 stuff uh, onto a new home and I was kind of lucky that I bought it all in sales and various other things uh, looking out for it so I really haven't lost very much money at all it's just a bit of a pain having to do lots of eBay listings and various other things but anyway the code 75 down there is what I'll be using Okay, so we've uh, just quickly jumped to another part of the house. This is our spare room. And uh, one of the other things that I've been doing over the last few months, really, and particularly the last few weeks, when it's been too hot in the loft to do anything else, is to sort through my big mess of uh, rolling stock. Um, so I've piled it all up. I'm, at the moment, I'm just going through everything, trying to catalogue it all, and uh, also just work out where on earth I'm going to store it. Uh, it should mainly fit up in the loft underneath the layout when it's there, but uh, I still thought this was a good opportunity to go through it all, see what I've got, uh, maybe sort it into different rakes and all the rest of it. And uh, I'm also making a spreadsheet too of everything, so I've got it all recorded um, because by the time you finish sitting on eBay buying lots of secondhand stuff, it could be hard to remember exactly what you've got. And also in the Amazon Prime Day, I got myself a load of tubs uh, so I can uh, put everything, once they're categorised, into these tubs and keep the dust off them and uh, keep any moisture and all the rest off them. Uh, so that's been keeping me busy as well. And then through in uh, the kind of office room, I have also um, been working my way through all these scenic items which have been boxed up for many months waiting to go in the layout. So I'm just sifting through all that, working out what I'm going to use uh, and what I might need to pass on and uh, also clearing the, the spray table. So I've got a table where I used to do all of my uh, painting and spraying and all the rest of it and a wee spray booth there as well. 
uh, and uh, that's just been covered in boxes and storage stored items. So uh, I've been slowly working my way through all that, and hopefully once I've got all that cleared, all the boxes and rubbish up into the loft, they'll be able to get back to some customization and some proper modeling. Okay, so we're back at the desk now and uh, that is the update. So uh, there has been quite a lot going on behind the scenes, as I'm sure you'll agree. Um, and hopefully uh, come the next late update, I'll actually have a bit of track down and maybe even a few tutorials and how to's or just general bits and pieces of, of what I've been doing as part of that. But anyway, um, all that remains to be said for this video is thank you very much for watching. If you've not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button uh, and the wee bell or the wee gear icon or whatever it is these days. Uh, to make sure you don't miss out on anything new. If you've liked the video, feel free to give it a thumbs up as well. And um, feel free to share it uh, and spread the word about what I'm doing. But uh, I'll shop for now anyway. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Cheerio for now. Bye-bye. Okay, so normally that is where I would end the video, but I'm going to do a really quick shout out uh, this time. First one I've ever done, uh, and this is to the Strathpeffer Spa Model Railway channel. Um, it's one that you might not have come across yet, but it's a, it's a great channel and it really promises to be something special. And the guy who's doing it has got a brilliant attention for detail and he's made a fabulous model of Strathpeffer Railway Station. Um, and uh, he's got a lovely backdrop going on. It's a shunting layout, sort of ex exhibition sort of size, that sort of thing. Um, but he's got a lovely presentation style and uh, some really interesting videos so far and I'm sure some really interesting videos to come. So anyway, here's the shout out. If you've not already found his channel, please do head over here. I'll stick a card up if it's not already up. Um, please do head over and uh, if you like it, subscribe and uh, you know if you like the videos, give him a thumbs up, all the normal stuff. Um, but I thought it'd be really nice just to, to support him and some other channels. I'll probably do some more shout outs. Anyway, that really is all from me. So cheerio for now. Bye bye. Thank <laughs> you.